Welcome back to Barrel Brothers, and today we're back on the Cappuccino. Vipuccino. I got from Yahoo Japan, uh, I thought it'd be easier if I got a, another diff to put the LSD into for the cappuccino, of course. And this just turned up about two hours ago. I thought, oh, well, let, let's have a look at it um, and I'll see if I can put the other one in. So the first thing I found out is it was full of oil. And the second thing I found out was that looks awfully to me like a Torsen center. I know there was a, a special one that came out with a Torsen diff in it. I may have lucked out. Like it, was, it wasn't an expensive diff and it obviously hadn't been opened because it still had oil on it. But uh, yeah, I think I've lucked out here. So the plan, I've just pressed out this bush in the back of this one and the car's over there. Now here's the thing, later on today in about two hours, I've got to go to the Mighty Car Mods premiere of their new movie. <laughs> and I'm supposed to be driving this. So I thought, bugger it, we'll see if we can just slip. I've got the president here for just in case, but the diff that's in that is noisy as hell. It's, it's really horrible and it's clicky and it's clunky. And this one isn't, it really isn't. And then it's got a torsion center on it too. So I think that's the way to go. I've also got another diff coming that, cause I bought, put bids on two of them. One was cheap like really cheap and that's that's the one that's coming so i can always put the lsd center in that but i'm thinking we just put this back on this one around that way and put it in the car and just see what it's like done i got three quarters of an hour to left dude <laughs> i'm doing well all righty so we've got the diff in and we've got a bit of a problem as in i thought that the the uh, diff that we took out was noisy. We've been going downhill, all right? Now we're starting to go uphill. And it's a lot worse when we get above 80K. So uh, I thought what I'll do, I'll buy some, uh, it's supposed to have 90 weight oil in it. I think we'll buy some 140 and chuck that in and see if it shuts it up a bit. Um, we're still going ahead with the LSD. I'll, I'll, I'll record a bit more when we're like in an 80k zone and it's like it's, it, well it's not deafening but it's pretty freaking loud and it's on acceleration too and here we are on the freeway 100 kilometers an hour okay so here's the plan we'll take this and this and put it in there and we'll take this and put it in there note 90 note 140 a feeble attempt to try and shut it up, I suppose. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. The torsen is actually quite good, which is which is a bit strange because when you think about it, torsen is what? Torque sensing. 660cc engine. Torque? Anyway, but it actually works quite well. Um, like you fling it into a, a, I've been trying it out around the roundabouts to see if I could get it to break and, and, and what it'd do. It actually just grips up and goes and it's really quite smooth how it works. So the plan from this point is we'll take the Cusco center and put it into here and set it all up and try and make it quiet and whatnot. And then we'll put it in the car and then if it's really clunky and horrible, um, I mean, to sell the Torsen diff, I'm gonna to have to fix it anyway. So I might take it to my diff guys and get them to tickle it all up and make it as good as it can be. And if that's noisy and, this one's noisy and clunky and horrible, then we'll put the Torsen back in. And I've still got the, the, the third diff uh, coming from Japan, which is due here in a couple of days, which was the ultra cheapy. I actually bought it for 44 bucks. It cost 366 landed, but it, it, the actual diff cost 44 Aussie dollars. According to the ad, the guy took it out of his car and put it on his shelf. The reason that I wanted to take this one out and get it fed is it vibrates as you go through like three grand thereabouts. When it starts making torque, it vibrates. Like, you know, it's, it's pretty yucky. I should have, 
taken a video of it in the car, but I didn't. Now, this one does two, but a lot less. I have no idea what causes it. Um, it really became noticeable after we changed the clutch. Instead of working like that far from the top of the travel, it now works about that far from the bottom of the travel, which is a lot better. It caught me out a few times on the way home. <laughs> what causes a diff to vibrate as it's, as it's starting to make torque? There's that word again, torque. In the same sentence, well, it, when talking about a 660cc engine. Well, now it's gonna go with a bit more boost. So that diff was just too noisy, so it's not in the car anymore. So the plan's changed slightly. So the torsion, the noisy torsion, is around at my diff, guys. The upside of this is, I now think that this diff is really quiet. This diff is the one that we are going to put the um, Cusco limited slip in, center into. Uh, it's into that one there. I also have another one that is rolled up. Um, so I have four now. We should be able to build a good one out of what we got. So the plan is, it's got that one at the moment. When um, the fettled one comes back from the guys around the corner, when that comes back from here, we'll, we'll do another, yet another dip, diff swap, put the torsion back in, take this one out and take the Cusco Center around to the diff guys and then they can sort that one as well. And then when that comes back, we'll do yet another diff swap. We've got it down to about an hour. We'll throw it into here, and then we'll just choose whether we want the Torsen or the um, LSD. I'm thinking it's the LSD, the Cusco, for the simple reason is oh, I want to change the diff again. Okay, you got the plan now? Take the diff out to put the diff in. So we're taking the diff out and putting that diff in, and, and then we'll take that diff out to put the other diff in, and it... What's the diff, you may ask? I don't know, I'm lost. Anyway, that's what we're going to do. While I think of it, this just rolled up through the door. Where the hell is it? Not in that pocket. Genuine. <laughs> It'll have genuine Viper parts on it. So the plan is to take the Suzuki S off and put the Viper badge on instead. This uh, particular version is called the Sneaky Pete because of the, well, look at the look on its face. So. I reversed out of the driveway at not quite a stupid enough angle and broke my front spoiler here and down here. So today we're here fixing up the driveway so it doesn't do any more damage to the cappuccino. So I put aluminium plates in behind there now to sort that out. But as you can see, right, it's cracked right through there. Caught this bottom edge. But I mean, it's pretty low, but like, they're just a dumb design. Well, they're a good design if you drive SUVs like everybody else. But if you're like me, I don't like SUVs and four wheel drive. If everybody drives them, I don't. I drive little cars that are low and got small wheels on them and they're cool. Easy curve, good product. I spent yesterday putting on the boost controller. It's quite a handy little gadget. It's quite difficult to put on. We'll get to that a little bit later. The second thing is when we change the lights around, because we're using smaller bulbs, it flashes quickly. Um, and so we put some resistors in and that took it back to normal. Now one side is now flashing quickly um, again. So I figure when I was working around here with the battery out, um, because this, the wiring for this is just sort of under the bonnet here, which is where I think I might've dislodged that um, resistor uh, first but not least though you'll note that there is a coffee container here on the guard note I use the, co the word coffee container the coffee is not currently contained by this coffee container it is contained by the carpet below the passenger seat in the vehicle so I thought oh you're coming today it's still holidays here so I thought oh let's go and get a coffee shop cup of coffee on the way in. <laughs> really good one, nice large one. Um, cappuccinos don't have a cup holder. So I balanced it precariously on the console, which is put on the console, hopped out, unlocked the gate, opened up, hopped back in, elbow. <sighs> so my first job of the day is to take the passenger seat out and clean up all the carpet before it starts to stink. Smells very like coffee in there at the moment, which is appropriate when you think about it. <laughs> I suppose it doesn't smell like Viper, but yeah, 
Anyway, that's job number one today. Those sort of coffees are made up of like 80% milk, so we're gonna have to put up with an off milk smell over the next couple of days, starting tomorrow. Okay, now that that unpleasantness is out of the way, let's get on to uh, happier things. Boost control. Here is the unit itself. I've placed it down here and done the controls straight out of the back of it. It's very easy to play around with. I've unfortunately put it so when I'm sitting in the driver's seat and it's in top gear, you can, it obscures half of it. But that's easy enough to muck around with. Now, things that you do play around with are first up, your duty cycle. So it starts off at about 10%. I'm, as you can see it there is. Um, it's just running through, it's 33%. My peak boost at the moment is 14.1. You do set a an over boost in it, which I've set to 15 pound. I don't want it to go over 15 pound. Um, it's got a curious little thing that it does on the freeway, actually, where it's always been sort of a bit light switchy when you cruise along on the freeway, you come to a slight rise and it'll just like, you know, Sudden boost, sudden off, sudden boost, sudden off, which it still does. The top gear um, and hits the boost cut. So uh, it goes back to standard boost. But there's a couple of advantage advantages that this thing has that um, really improves this on a, with a standard turbo. So we've got our duty cycle. Next up is our gain. Now this is how quickly it um, ramps up on boost. Uh, this this could be the problem in Top Gear, but like, psh, you don't really hit it that much. And then your third thing is your sensitivity. Now, what this can, I've got that on 70% at the moment. As I said, I just sort of smashed it in last night. I went to Shed Club and then fiddled with it all the way home, which is a decent drive, it's about an hour or so. It's got a lot of settings, you know. I don't know what that does. You can do all this. Oh, this is your, your over boost um, setting. Uh, peak is off um, your display you can choose I've got it on PSI as you can see there you can have it on uh, bar or um, KPA but PSI because I'm old school and that's just what I understand I don't know what that does don't know what that does because I'm not using them color you can you can muck around with the colors you know uh, uh. Anyway, I'll just keep it yellow for the moment. So, as you're driving along, it's very easy to just go, okay, I wanna just muck around with my duty cycle a little bit and bring it up. So I've got it on 33% at the moment. I'm getting a peak of 14.1. My um, over boost at the moment is, what was my over boost actually? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Over boost is at 14.9. Uh, which is close enough to 15. Which is okay, so one bar is 14.7 PSI uh, at sea level. You will get differences in this in if it's a cold day, because the air is denser, um, your boost will change and muck around with this, but this is pretty good at controlling it. And it does it with this little gizmo down here, which is hooked up, you can see the lines running through there. I haven't prettied it up yet. And then to, as a reference, I've got my T off just here, and that goes through and back to the unit itself is where it, it uh, measures the boost. So yeah, it's um, it works pretty well and it's made a difference. Now, I was gonna talk about the, um, the gain and the sensitivity. Interesting thing was it came on boost at about three, three and a half, ran out of puff about six. Now, with these guys, with your gain, it actually boosts up earlier, around 2.5 to 2.7 um, on the dial. And now it boosts, it's got meaningful boost at seven, a bit over seven, like seven, seven and a half around there. So it actively starts closing the wastegate to keep that boost up in a higher rate. So it doesn't run out of puff. So it's made an entirely different car to drive, actually. It's really rather good. It's really broadened that power band. But you notice when you hit the boost cut, it suddenly sends you back to normal. <laughs> it took me most of the day to put this in. And on any ordinary car, it would take quite a bit less. But this is no ordinary car. This is a cappuccino. To get these hoses on, you have to get to the, cap to the uh, actuator can and actuator, which is buried down let me show you on, an, on one I've prepared earlier. That's our unit there, basic turbocharger unit. Here's our dinky little turbo. 
there. It's not very big. That's the job though. See, and um, where we were looking at before was basically down on it like this. And here, if you look right down here underneath here, that's our actuator can and the, uh, the signal from the compressor. So I had to get rid of that first and then get this stuff on there, which was, which is down there. So this had to come off, battery had to come out, this had to come off, uh, that had to come off, that had to come off. The amount of stuff that I took off this to, to get to it was, that's why it took so bloody long. There you have it. That's the whole unit there. That's your um, uh, catalytic converter. It's, it's a tiny little turbo, but it's a tiny little engine. I've been talking to Isaac Weber Tuner Extraordinaire and, and um, Guitar Luthier also Extraordinaire extraordinaire about turbos and he's saying a carrot 15 or something which is sort of the next size up from this but i'm going to enjoy it as it is so the problem was it, it it had this really good mid-range as standard turbos mostly do and it ran out of puff up top now it's running out of puff up tops because of our little controller there is uh doing the job admirably let's get this strapped up and we'll take it for a drive so i can have a bit of a squeeze you know how they say people uh buy big trucks and cars uh, to compensate for something. The, the thing about them is that they're only 700 kilos. It's about inertia. They can change direction really quickly. And that makes them an absolute scream to drive. Let's cruise along here. Down a gear. This is off camber with a hump in it. Look, not even trying. And the car that was right behind me is now no longer right behind me. It's, it's the king of the roundabouts, or the big roundabouts, this thing. Check out this next one. Down a gear. No brakes. See? <laughs> Hilarious. We've had the GFB in for a little, a little while now. Um, oh, a couple of weeks. And through a process of fiddling around, there's good and bad things about it. Um, the only bad things are because of me everything else is good <laughs> and the bad thing is like it's not really bad it's just you know I've got to do things differently when you're changing gear let me get a good angle on that so like this it's very easy to as you can see hit you know if, you, if you're sloppy so I have to keep a firm grip on my knob <laughs> It's very easy to see, just a touch, and you can change that. There's six presets and a scramble. A scramble, you've only got to touch that, and it goes to scramble. P1. All right, so we're on 14 point, well, 14.7 is, is how high it goes. Our duty cycle is 32%, peak of 14.7. Um, our gain, we had to wind this down a fair, but it's only on 25. We started up fairly high, but it was actually whacking up so high that it would hit the boost cut now the boost cut on these things is really high it's like 16.4 psi um that's a factory boost cut i don't advise going that far um i've got it set at 15 pound um, one bar seems to be according to the scuttle but seems to be um the number for these for the standard turbo um we're looking at ecu it's got a little thing that it does um at the moment we'll get into that in a moment um, anyway back to this thing that's the gain now my sensitivity which controls it like once it's boosted up is at 55 percent. i had that higher too but i've come down and now it will hold boost as you will have seen in the other video hold boost to like you know it used to run out of puff at six and six and a half now it's 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 getting right at seven and a half and it, it's still holding sort of 12 or 13 pounds so standard they're supposed to run 11 but um before we put the exhaust on well i noticed a big difference when we put the exhaust on and now in this in the standard setting it runs a fraction over 11 pounds of boost um i would have said that with the exhaust on it's more like well, it, fit, it it I didn't have the controller on then, so I didn't a boost gauge on then, so I did I don't know how much it was, but it certainly felt a lot. It's a, noticed a hell of a difference when we put the exhaust on. Moving right along here, we've got our not using that overboost is at 
14.9 psi just over one bar they say 1.1 is about it it's pretty much beyond the efficiency of the engine anyway um, but now it has a meaning really meaningful range it it you can rev it over six if you're really pushing for it but it works best between three and a half and six and a half thousand rpm that is its envelope you can rev it right out like seven and a half it's pointless going to eight or eight and a half i mean apart from showing people that it can go that far it'll do that happily but um that's where it is now the the ecu i was looking at a uh, pnp um from k sport in the usa they use uh, a setup where you put a uh, a, a, a new board with a micro squirt set up into it, it makes it fully pro programmable and it takes a lot of the uh, tuning out of it which would be pretty easy but having talked to Dave he reckons he can get a 750 Haltech um, you know wise by Dave Haltech Dave uh, Davo Davey boy Dave my man he says that um, he could probably get one of this wired up to a 750 and running in a night <laughs> like at a shed club meeting so in about two hours so what i'm thinking of doing is just getting a hold of another ecu because apparently according to ben they're all i wonder if ben's got one getting hold of another of another ecu apparently they're very archaic but everything's labeled so um and talking to dave basically all we need to do is make up a flying lead so the thing will plug in so if i get another cheapo e ecu get that sent across give it to Dave and say can you make a lead say this will plug into a 750 pretty much away we go but back to what the ECU is doing here what it'll do in second and third or sometimes fourth is it will I think it's trying to limit boost by retarding the spark so it sort of does this thing you know uh, I mean it's not that pronounced so I can feel it through my bum and it's hard to see uh, it actually did it this morning when I was doing that filming, but uh, but you can't really see it. You can feel it through your bum, and uh, that's what it's doing. So, and apparently the the well the ECU's from 1992, so you know <laughs> this is when this car came out. So it obviously been developed in the late 80s sort of thing. So it's not really up to date. I think we can get um, a lot better just control out of it and that will uh, the, the beauty of putting the Howtech on there is it's eminently tunable as they all are they're fabulous things and you know we can put a bigger intercooler on it maybe put this we don't want to go too far like that the plan is not to go too far with this mainly because the gearboxes are made of glass diffs seem to be fairly solid from what i've seen I, like i took it around to my diff guys and they were surprised at how big the diff was so i've heard people complain about the diffs mainly uh, they don't break as such i think they just get go noisy they all seem to be noisy everybody complains about noisy diffs we're done for the time being um next we're just waiting for for trung with the paint and we put some silly stripes on it and we'll continue to tinker away with it but um i've got to get stuck back into i've kind of neglected that while i've been playing with this because this is just fun but i'm going to continue to daily and even with its stupid paint job we'll look at doing something with ben as well uh because he's got a real one you know we need to put these together i can't wait to do it like an american meat or like a, a a mopar meat turn up oh i've got a viper but i washed it and it shrunk <laughs> but thank you very much for watching and we will see you next time